हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ परस्यू ट्यूटोरियल्स एंड टुडे वी गॉन्ट वीन टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सेमी कंडक्टर्स सो फ्रेंड्स एज वी नो द सेमी कंडक्टर्स आर द बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स ऑफ मॉडर्न इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड बिफोर द नाइनटीन थर्टीज द पीपल जनरली यूज वैक्यूम डाइट्स एंड अदर काइंड ऑफ डिवाइस फॉर द सेमी कंडक्टर फॉर द सेमी कंडक्टर्स एज अल्टरनेटिव बट आफ्टर द डिस्कवरी ऑफ द ट्रांजिस्टर इन नाइनटीन थर्टी नाइनटीन फोर्टीज Uh, enlightenment in the field of electronics and so we are about to discuss about the semiconductor devices and what are the uses and how these devices are being used in the modern electronics so as far as class 12 is concerned as for the syllabus of class 12 is concerned let us discuss about the semiconductors we first introduction we first go through introduction then we'll go to some other uh, like what are the graphical issues of it then we'll discuss about pn junction diodes these different kind of uh, intrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductors and after that we'll go to transistors so let us do the semi uh, in, uh, semiconductors in the introductory part so introduction so what we need to remember in the introduction part so before the discussion start i will i would like to know you that uh, as far as this video is concerned or this uh, youtube channel is concerned i'm not going to go into very details of it i'm just going to the topics which are very essential for you to know for the class 12 exam as well as uh, the joint exam and also if you use this kind of knowledge in your engineering and other field that will definitely give you some good result so let us do the introduction in introduction we need to know that what are actually semiconductors now see we as far as our electronic systems are concerned there are first thing which we no is metals right if you i um, mean uh, if you just get uh, any kind of wires you will see obviously what you will see copper aluminum or other metals or alloys of metals right now after metals we have insulators so what are insulators insulators are those particles where no conduction conduction happens now what is the reason behind this that in metals conduction happens and in insulators no conduction happens the reason is that in metals there are several free electrons out there what free electrons free electrons are there but in insulators all the free electrons are being bonded to the main orbit as a result no free electrons here f means free and e means electrons so free electrons but then came the third category that is which we known as semi conductors in short s oblique c so what are semi conductors in semi conductors there are free electrons but they are not present in a normal state and what i mean by normal state in normal state by mean i mean that whenever the temperature rises as we know that the metal the conductivity the conductivity get decreases right the conductivity of metal get decreases with the rise of temperature because the resistance increases but in semiconductors the reverse happen if temperature increases then conductivity also increases as a result what we can conclude by this by this uh, inference is that with the gradual rise of temperature the electron number definitely going to increase and when the electron number is increasing then obviously the conduction happens as far as the different kind of books are concerned in class 11 12 level they have given an option that there is a i mean there is a less gap between the valence band and conduction band and all those thing you can obviously check those thing in different kind of books that are ncert and other books you can obviously check that but for the sake of our joint knowledge or for the class 12 knowledge this temperature and the conduction relation is more than enough now 
let us go to the second part that is as uh, after to this part the introduction part has been completed now the second part in second part we will discuss about the different kind of conductors semiconductors so as far as we know there are two type of semiconductors we know that is intrinsic semiconductors here is c oblique c s oblique c means intrinsic semiconductors and next we have extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductors so what are intrinsic semiconductors intrinsic semiconductors are those semiconductors in which noted intrinsic semiconductors are those semiconductors in which there are some kind of conducting elements and by conducting elements i mean either free electrons or free holes now the free electrons as we know electron is negatively charged particle so as we uh, this is 1.609 newton to the power of minus 29 coulomb right now this free hole is actually a positive component this is negative component and this is a positive component having equal number of equal amount of charge it is also having a 1.609 into 10 to the power of minus 29 coulomb right so by this by this name intrinsic semiconductor what we can infer an intrinsic semiconductor means that the semiconductors which are not being doped that means that whatever the number of electrons or holes that are present in a uh, semiconductor material the same number is being involved in conduction process so these are called as intrinsic semiconductors here the in case of semicond uh, intrinsic semiconductors there is a small formula sometimes some problem comes that is n of i that is number of intrinsic uh, conducting elements intrinsic conducting elements remember that is equals to n of e that is number of electrons that is number of holes as i said that uh, element is need to be stable need to be balanced so the number of electrons and number of holes should be equal otherwise it would have been some kind of charge and rather it would act like some kind of uh, ions so you you won't uh, go through those kind of ions principle so as far as this 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 uh, video is concerned we will go for this ni is equals to ne is equals to n of h right so next we will go to extrinsic semiconductors extrinsic semiconductor what do we mean by extrinsic semiconductors Now, extrinsic semiconductors, as the name suggests, that some kind of external element is being used. In extrinsic semiconductors, there are two types of elements generally. That is one called as pentavalent element. Another one is trivalent. So, what do you mean by pentavalent and trivalent? Pentavalent means that there are five pent means five so we have five number of valency particles are there but in trivalent we have three valencies out there so let me give you a small kind of trick that whenever this penta now will come okay penta means plus five and not plus okay three right so five means that there would be a generation of a electron and try it means there would be a generation of hole because if four is given as a silicon for a silicon extra so if it is more than four that is plus one that is one electron and if it is deficient of one electron that means one extra positive charge has been created that is it is a hole right so i guess uh, there are some element there are some uh, like pentavalent element pentavalent doping uh, i mean the the components namely for pentavalent it is pentavalent it's arsenic then uh, antimony then you have phosphorus p5 and for the trivalent you have your uh, indium boron aluminum 
I will give you the page number of this in if you are a CBSE student then obviously you can find in page number of the NCRT 474 of book 2 book 2 474 you can get all the things out there so I can I can act, actually suggest that you have got an idea of the extrinsic semiconductors now let us move to the main element that is our junction diodes so what are junction diodes PN junction diodes or whatever so first we need to discuss what is P and what is N here P can be denoted to P side of an anode anode means N side P means positive side of the anode and N means negative side of anode right so if we connect a P side that means having the majority carrier the carriers are what holes P side and if we there are majority carrier as electrons then we have N right so let us connect to the battery if we connect this to a battery and if the P side is connected to the positive side of the battery this is positive this is negative if it is connected to the negative side of the battery then this PN junction PN junction PN junction is said to be forward biased forward biased well uh, you must know what is biasing a biasing means anything in which you connect something which is having some kind of uh, a charge or a voltage to a device that means if you connect a positive a positive to positive a negative to negative then it is called generally as forward biased but if you connect in a reverse way that means if you connect the positive side of the battery to the negative side to the n side and the negative side of the battery to the pos uh, to the positive side that is to the p side then it is called it is what is called reverse biased that means for power positive bias positive positive negative negative and it is positive negative negative positive right so the uh, so the graph how it looks graph would look generally like this here this is actually the voltage V that means if we connect if we uh, give a graph that means what at certain voltage this has the rising so this is actually called as knee voltage VK knee voltage and generally the value of VK is 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 volt for silicon for germanium it is quite low that is 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 volt for germanium uh, semiconductors now the symbol the symbol of PN junction that is generally this this is the P side this is the N side right now let us move to the next topic that is the different kind of connection of PN junction diode So as I said that if you do the forward biasing, if you do the forward biasing FB that is forward biasing in that case you can connect the apparatus like this this is a voltmeter out there and this is a battery right so here the positive side is being connected to the positive side and negative side is being connected to the negative side so if you connect like this this kind of uh, connection is called forward biased circuit if you connect like this you will get the voltmeter i mean the voltage reading what is the voltage across this uh, pn junction diode and if you want to know what is the current flowing through it then also you can connect a ammeter you just need to disclose this current disclose this point connect one ammeter 
and you will get it and the current flowing through the this one so if we do the graph the graph look like this one is like this it will go like this it will go like this then it will get saturated at some point so as you can see that this is the v i v input this is i this is a voltage iv this is called as iv characteristics characteristics of p n junction diet so the point at which we will get a reasonable amount of current that if we extrapolate then we will definitely get a voltage which we call as vk or new voltage or threshold voltage whatever you call it's all the same this point is very important because this concept would be definitely used in the concept of transistor and other uh, other devices in the further uh, explanation after that we have our neg uh, negative biasing or reverse biasing reverse biasing in reverse biasing what we do is that we would do the same circuit for your uh, simplicity of explanation then we have voltmeter out there but in this case what we would do is that we would connect that battery in a reverse order so it would connect like this and here we connect one ammeter so we know the what amount of current is flowing through this pn junction diode this is the p side and this is the n side so this is the negative side of the battery and this is the positive side of the battery so what would happen is that a reverse current will try to flow through this pn junction diode so whenever this amount of current at first there will be no current because it is reverse bias but when the amount of current would increase there would be a certain amount of reverse current now what it, what i would mean by reverse current is that the negative current so far you haven't been so much accustomed with the negative current but negative current it would mean that the flow of current is generally unilateral but in this case it would be unilateral that is supposed but the current direction will be reversed in order than the forward biased so if we do the graph then the graph would look like this what i said as first ki there will be no current no current no current no current no current no current but a certain value of v will reach vi that is this is the vi curve vi axis and this is the current axis this is a positive positive i current this is the negative i current negative i negative this is i positive this is v positive so you are giving some kind of reverse voltage because this connection is in reverse way this is v negative at certain voltage it will definitely break down and this will give a enormous amount of current that means with the small amount of voltage at this constant voltage this will further break down and a very high high reverse current will flow so we will try this is called as vb v breakdown vb is equals to voltage of breakdown so we will try that not to give this pn junction diode this vb because if we do so then the pn junction diode due to this reverse current flow will get blown so this uh, if we uh, connect the both forward biasing and reverse biasing then the graph would look like this this is a very important graph you should remember all these things this is v i this is i output this is v b and this is v t or you can say v k the value of v t v k or v t is 0.6 or 0.7 in case of silicon and it is 0.3 in case of germanium and this is vb so i guess you have a get a good idea about all this pn junction diet in the next video i will definitely discuss about the further information of the transistors and real life application of the transistors 
सो थैंक यू एंड प्लीज सब्सक्राइब फॉर द वीडियो थैंक यू